Okay, welcome to the first uh, card game that I'm going to teach you. This game is called Multiple Madness, uh, and it's a game that I've been using in my classroom since I taught second grade. Now I'm teaching fifth grade. The kids like to play this. I like to use it to increase their math, uh, their multiplication um, fluency. Uh, so. Uh, you can play this at home, you can play this anywhere as long as you have a deck of cards. I prefer to use two decks of cards because the game lasts a little bit longer that way. But if you have one deck of cards, it makes a good uh, game as well. So uh, you could have anywhere from one to four players or as many as you can tolerate and as many decks as you have. It just depends on how big the table is around and how patient people are. But uh, ideally it's two to four players. But you could play it solitaire for practice. Okay. This uh, <coughs> game is played with an array, obviously, because it's a multiplication madness. And arrays are oftentimes how teachers teach multiplication these days, as well as division. They like to see arrays, because that's where, you know, it's easy to see that 3 times 3 equals how many cards total? 9. And so that's an, also an illustration of multiplication even before we've played the game. So you could always uh, demonstrate that again and say, okay, I'm going to add another column here because columns go vertical and rows go across. I'm going to add another column here and now how many, what's the product when I say uh, 3 times 4? Well the product now is 3 times 4 equals 12 because there's 12 cards total and you could actually count the number of cards there. And after you've done that little remedial thing with the kids you can now say um, we're going to play a game. This is called Multiple Madness and this game what you have to do is find multiples of cards and uh, when you find a multiple you get to call that equation and as long as you get the factors and the product correct you get to take those cards the person with the most cards at the end wins so first off this is what we do player number one we're gonna play an example with two players that way it simplifies the game significantly uh, in comprehension of the rules so number one player says nine times two equals eighteen and if the player says it perfectly precisely and correctly they get to take that stack and put it on their side Dealer, whoever the dealer is, could be the, one of the players, it really doesn't matter. Dealer re -de uh, deals so that the array fills in. Of course, this is a very simplistic array because, um, you know, uh, it fits on the screen better. But I play it typically with a 5x5, five five. Uh, that's average. But if you have advanced players and you go 6x6 six six array, or you just keep on growing the size of the array as, array as wide as you want, as large as you want, and it... Uh, increases the amount of multiples and it increases the difficulty of the game. <clears throat> you don't have to have any particular number of cards to play this game. It doesn't have to have precisely four queens, four kings, you know. So you could actually take a, a, a garbage deck or a deck that nobody wants anymore. You could ask people to donate, uh, uh, if you're a teacher, donate all their unwanted decks of cards, throw them all in a big batch as long as they're the same size. It's kind of nice. Um, everybody could play using those decks, uh, you know, discarded decks, decks nobody wants. I go to a card. I went to a card club and got a ton of decks of cards for my classroom. But if you're uh, at, at, in most people's homes, they already have like loose decks that that are sitting around. So uh, in this case, the rule is um, with face cards, each face card is worth ten, but you can't interchange them. You can't say, well, there are five face cards times ten equals fifty, and then take all five cards, that wouldn't be cool. So what we do is, uh, say it's player two's turn, he says king times two equals 20. Oh, the other player has to verify that that is the correct answer, and then they'll say check or verified, and when you verify it, then the player, person gets to take their cards. Then the dealer deals again. Ooh, looks like we've got three queens right there. Now, typically I don't allow kids to put their hands and count like this, because that's annoying and at the same time um, it's too easy that way. They should be using their mind to sort uh, and when they use their mind to sort it's a lot. Um, it's good for their brain and memory practice. So in this case what you're going for is the highest multiple. So the highest multiple there is uh, three queens and I would say queen times three, this is player number one again, queen times three equals 30. And so uh, player two verifies before you can't touch the cards until player two verifies. So player two says, okay, check. And so player one gets the cards. Okay. Now this is very hard to play with a three by four array. Um, 
but here's the next uh, rule. Uh, player two's turn. Player two says three times two equals five. And player one says steal. Because three times two is not five, player one gets a chance to steal. And they say three times two equals six. And then the other player says, wait a minute, that, how do you know? I says, well, let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three times two cards equals six. You call the face value of the card first, and then you say the multiple. You can't do it backwards. You can't say two times three equals, um, you, know, you know, whatever. Two times three equals six, because then you'd be talking about the number two card, right? And we're not talking about the number two card. So uh, three times two is six. Number one gets to steal. Uh, now, table or player two gets another turn. No, actually, he lost his turn. So player one gets to go again, because the reason why they got the steal, they got the steal, and so you know that basically the person that made the mistake should lose a turn. So player one goes again, and um, in this case, I'm going to make sure that it's. Uh, ah, there you go. Now, uh, in this situation, we have um, player one going, and player one says five times three equals 15. Now, he gets the factors and the product correct. Five times three does equal 15. But player two notices that there's actually four multiples of five. So you would say five times four equals 20. So, uh, but first things first. Player two has to call steal. Five times four equals 20. And player one will concede that point and say, uh, okay, verified. And so player, after player one verifies, player two gets to take the cards. And so that's a nice little win right there for him. Now, uh, the way you call it is by the face. So in this case, there's no ones in the deck. There are actually aces. So we just say ace times two equals two. And play goes on and on and on that way. So the strategy is to get the greatest number of cards, not the greatest value. Now, say for example, <laughs> since we don't uh, make a big deal about um, uh, editing the decks or making sure there's a, the right amount of this and the right amount of that, oftentimes jokers are going to pop into the scene. So say for example you have this scenario where there's a couple of jokers in the, in the playing field over here. You say, oh, well, what do we do with jokers? I call those 20s. So jokers times 2 equals 40. And then, you know, you would verify that, and then the person gets to take those cards. Okay, so um, that's the basic game. Usually if you're a teacher and you're playing the game in class and the bell rings, it's very difficult to count the cards. So you don't count the cards. You match the stacks. So usually by the end of the game, um, or if the game has been being played for a while, one person will have a significantly higher stack than the other. In this case, it was an even match simply because of the way that we were discussing it. But say, for example, um, you know, okay, player two looks like he has a higher stack, then player two wins the game. You just look at the stack sideways, and the kids just, that's a lot faster way than actually having to calculate. Um, Near the end of the game, you just keep playing until there's nothing left. And uh, like I said, oh, I don't know, I, I didn't think I said this, but um, <coughs> if there's, you can't do multiples of one. You can't say six times one equals six. It's just too remedial, and um, you want to challenge the kids, not just have them say what's obviously on the card. Unless they really are that remedial, then you can go ahead and do that. So six times one is six. Oh, okay, you get it, you get it. But you should be trying to challenge the kids and saying things like eight times two equals 16, okay? Uh, I hope that uh, helps uh, for coming up with a cheap and easy way to practice multiplication.